So I mentioned uh, this is exactly the point where my wife had came in and started watching. You know, was what in the room oh, watching she the saw show. Mina. There's Mina Shirakawa shaking her boobs everywhere. Yeah, she's and, a boob shaker. My wife is just staring at the screen, and then there, she uh, there's these two women smooching and holding hands, and yeah, this is what I'm watching, dear. This is what, what I'm, when you're not home, this is the kind of stuff I have on TV. That's true. Yes. So she says she's here to win matches in gold. You want Mina? I want everything. And so Mariah is also in this package. This is the key. And uh, putting over how great Mina is. But then we go to, to Tony Storm and Mariah May. Well, hold on. The, the real key to it is they finally told us everything about Mina Shirakawa. That's they true. said she was a five-time stardom champion, used to be a model, liked to put on a show. She says she's shaking her chest. Says Mariah, or Mariah says, we went to stardom together, formed Club Venus, won the tag titles. Mina's like my big sister, but she's very dangerous. I'm glad she's my friend. And then Mina says, why am I here? I want gold. I want everything. And I watched it, and I thought, well, goddamn, where was this, like, a month ago? Well. They should have had the return, or the debut. Remember when Mina debuted? She comes out. She celebrates with Mariah. They make out, they drink champagne, everything like that, okay? All right, I don't need a video package before the debut. It was like a surprise. Oh, my God, it's Mina Shirakawa. However, the very next week, this video package should have aired. It would have made the entire thing miles better for the people that aren't... What did Tony call everybody? His... uh, Sickos. His sickos? Yeah. Yeah. This show is for everyone, not just the sickos. So... The sickos have been watching it and are wondering what the hell is going on, and they're kind of telling you this or that, but the the number one rule is show, don't tell. Don't give a fuck what the announcers are telling me. Show, don't tell. She showed up. Well, everyone, here's who she is. Big video package. Explain it, where she's from, et cetera, some footage. Then all of a sudden, as a viewer, you're like, okay, I get it. Now you go on with your storyline. At least we finally got it, but this was long overdue. So then we go to Tony, excuse me, Renee interviewing Tony Storm and Mariah May, who is nuzzling up to Tony's bosom. Uh, Mariah announces Mina will be there next week, wants to do a contract signing, and she will be there to officiate it. So Tony does her promo. She has a match on, I believe, Rampage against Alex Windsor. All I know is her best line here was, everyone wants a shot at the wide load that holds the gold. (laughs) I laughed. The Redwood Big Bill. Welcomes us to TV time with Chris Jericho. Yes, he did. Brings out the host of the show, the guru of giving back, the Michael Jordan of Michael Jordans, Chris Jericho. Hi, everybody, he says. Who wants more TV time? I know I do. Look at my new shirt. The shirt says, hi, guys. My wife is appropriately disgusted. Who wants one? Who wants one? And he never gives it away. So they're in Des Moines, Iowa. Yes. <laughs> This was the underrated best part of the show. So I was eating some corn backstage, guys, from right here in Des Moines. I know a little about farming. You need a pH level of 6 to 6.8 in your soil. This is about a 7. That doesn't work for me, brother. How in the fuck has nobody ever thought of this before? Like, the heels always come out, and it's always, your team sucks. Such and such a big star left to go to another fucking town, whatever, and people boo and everything like that. But the psychology of, I'm going to come to a farming town, and I'm going to tell you how to fucking farm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Seattle. I'm going to tell you how to fish. You know, whatever. No one's ever tried that before. Like, every city you go to has something special about it. And the idea of going out there and your heel promo is basically, I know everything. Oh, you think you know how to make cheese? Well, I can tell you how to make cheese better than you can. And he pulled that trick here. I can tell you how to grow better corn. <laughs> so he brings out Private Party. Shivani is confused. I thought Private Party said no to this interview, but that's not what they said. They kind of dismissed it, but as they're panning away, one of them said, well, it might be fun. So here they are. Taz is sure to point out Big Bill is an excellent dancer and get this on TV, and he was right. It was a lot of fun. So the song is about shots. Jericho warns them, next time you're singing about shots, make sure you get a designated driver, guys. Ha ha, ha ha, ha. So he explains to them, listen, I know your high flying is very good, but your basics aren't up to snuff. I don't know who trained you, but he wasn't very good. I was trained by Stu Hart. 
I know how to do the bases properly. You don't even climb the top rope properly. It's technically unsound, guys. They beg him to show them. They call me Caitlin Clark of wrestling to get over with the Iowa crowd. So here's how Owen Hart taught me. And Jericho goes to the, the corner, and he puts his left foot on the bottom rope, and his right foot on the middle, and his left on the top, and then he says, and here's the part where you step over, and he steps over the top rope with his right foot and puts it on the top rope. So he steps over the turnbuckle with his right foot and puts it on the top rope. And so they, he, said, he asked, did you get that lesson? And they said, yep, here's a lesson for you. And they kick his feet down, and he bumps in the turnbuckle, and they run wild, and the other two dorks, and, and they clean house. And they laid Jericho out, and they go to do top rope moves. They did not climb the ropes the way Jericho taught them. No. They went left, right, left, right, left, right to the top. And the announcer was like, oh, see, they learned the lesson. Like, no, they were not paying attention. They are doing it wrong. Or at least not the way that Chris Jericho taught them. And it was working for them, clearly. So they had to hit a couple of big moves, and they laid Jericho out. And uh, How in go. God's name could people hate this segment? It's like, it was so preposterous. Jericho telling the local people how to make corn, how to grow better corn. Then telling these two guys, you don't know how to climb the ropes properly. Let me show you how to do it. And they're like, please, please show us how to do it. And then crotching him on the top rope because he's such an idiot. He just stood up there with them down below. And then they lay him out, hit their big dives and moves and everything. I mean, it was just a perfect build to a tag match. Here's the Moxley and Ido video package. It's great. Just shows them killing each other repeatedly and Moxley screaming, nobody's been to the edge like you and me, Naito. This time I finished the job, you are a dead man. Big match at the Forbidden Door. The Bang Bang Gang do a backstage promo. It's the one-year anniversary of Collision, but all they hear about is the House of Black. So they bury the House of Black, their lights out gimmick. It's just, you know, they turn the lights off and on, who cares? They call them out for Collision. Youngston, Ohio, this town is not big enough for the two of us. Your asses are getting kicked. As always, it was a hell of a promo by Juice Robinson. Jay White not there, by the way. They had card blade again. Yes. Mm. Daniel Garcia versus Nick Camarado. What the hell happened to him? He's a jobber. He looked like a giant Noam Dar. Yeah, he's out there, and Daniel Garcia beats him. In 30 seconds, maybe? And this, this actually was kind of one of those matches where I was like, what was the point of this? And they did, they I did, did write cut, that down here, actually, yes. They did cut backstage to Will Ospreay watching along because I guess Daniel Garcia, you know, this Daniel Garcia, I mean, this was one thing I did not like on this show. He's one of those many guys who he's just in the exact same place. And they do the exact same thing with him, which is squash win over a nobody, squash win over nobody, squash win over nobody, squash win over nobody. He's on a win streak. He's going to challenge somebody that's a star, and he's going to lose and get back to the exact same spot and then beat a jobber, beat a jobber. But it's like, wash, rinse, repeat. It's been that way for years. And I just watched this, and it's like, this guy ain't beating Will Ospreay, okay? He's just not. And it's just the usual get a bunch of meaningless wins to set up a job and get right back to it again. Why was there a cowboy in Nick Camarado's corner? I don't know. There's a cowboy there. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.